Hey everyone, Izzy and MJ from Endless RVing. So we get a lot of questions, personal questions, questions about RVs, different questions on everything Just really. About life and... <laughs> yeah, we get those a lot on, uh, on social media as well as our YouTube channel. And occasionally we put videos together answering some of those questions. Some interesting questions. So we're gonna have all different, we're gonna have RV type questions. We're gonna have people asking us personal questions. So we kind of put it all together. We weren't able to take all the questions that came in because it was just too many. So we took some and then we'll save some for a future Q and A video. So number one, as you know, Izzy and I are very involved with Liquid Spring. We love our Liquid Springs. So and number one came from Bob Berger. And he said, my question has to do with suspensions. Are the Liquid Spring and safety systems compatible? If you do not have Liquid Spring with safety system and sumo springs and upgraded shocks be enough to give you a good and safe ride. So it's kind of a two part question. So number one, yes, Liquid Spring is compatible with safety plus, but that's actually the combo we have. It's also compatible with the upgraded rear and front sway bars. The sumo springs, any of the other suspensions, rear track bar, they all come off because they have to do with the leaf springs. The second part of that question is would the sumo springs and the other bolt-on upgrades give you a safe suitable ride the answer to that is yes it's a safe suitable ride from the factory without doing anything all you're doing when you add any kind of suspension upgrade is that you're enhancing the ride mm -hmm. now the difference between all those bolt-ons which we had versus the liquid spring it's not a comparison you're compar comparing apples to oranges it's really not a comparison it's a completely different suspension setup liquid spring obviously being really the best you can get on an f53 chassis like you can't get better than that at this point will the technology come out when somebody else comes in maybe at this point that is not the case while we're on it if you're new to the channel like mj said liquid spring does uh, sponsor our videos if you are interested in getting a system we will put the information from Wayne Wells down below from uh, Liquid Spring. You can give him a call. He'll answer all your questions. And you also, if you mention our channel, you get up to $750 off on a new Liquid Spring system. Mm -hmm. So there's the shameless plug. Yeah. Be sure to stay to the end of the video because we're going to ask you some questions. This is some active participation mm -hmm. from you as well. So midway, we're going to ask you one. At the end, we're going to ask you a tougher one. So make sure to stay to that. And the next question comes from Patricia Smith. And she said, what was the nicest RV resort? Price doesn't matter. Have you been to? Have you ever been to a motor coach resort for class A only? If so, where? Any plans for the future? If so, where? Probably the nicest one at this this point we've been to has been Fort Wilderness. I'm sure there's going to be more that we see that uh, we like better, but at this point that was really nice. Yeah, we, we've been to a bunch of nice ones. Uh, honestly, right. like none of them have blown me away. Not yet. Like, I'm no, not like, wow. Not yet, yeah. Have you ever been to a motor coach resort for class only? Actually, in Florida, we did visit a number of them in Naples, Port Charlotte, some different ones. Fort Myers. Yeah, beautiful beautiful we and in tampa last january we had stopped right didn't we yeah. stop by one yeah um, so like mj said we've been to a, a bunch of them but we haven't stayed at them but the facility right. it's a whole nother level right like you yeah, people are paying cool. a lot of money a lot of them are privately owned so yeah they're, they're, they're really nice all right number four this comes from somebody that we love on our channel she literally watches every single video and comments and on comments. every video we love her sherry weber says out of all the rvs at the hershey show which one did you like the best uh for me probably the dutch star the hershey show doesn't have like super high-end coaches that's one of my favorite coaches out there yeah mine it, it was a close tie i loved that but i loved the integra anthem 44 F? 44F, yeah. I couldn't remember if it was F or H. And, Beautiful. and we did a video uh, on our top three. So both those coaches made our yeah. top three yes. video. We'll link yeah. that one above. All right, the next one is from Christine Dorbert. And she said, hi, we met you at Hershey. And we're so glad you guys are super nice and down to earth in person. We were faking. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. All right, we wanted to know if you could buy, if you would buy another gasser at Class A again, would you still pick the Bay Star or would you go Tiffin, Fleetwood, or Holiday Rambler and why? Well, we probably wouldn't buy another gasser, but if we did, right. Fleetwood, Holiday, the Rambler would be out. No, yeah. Uh, the Tiffins, in our opinion, this is just our opinion, the Tiffin and the Numar are at a higher level. And both the Integra. I Integra. But not, and I mean, the Anthem is what I want, but that's a diesel in terms yeah. of gas. Both customer say. service and bill quality, I'm going to say both of those are, yeah. are a higher level, in our opinion. At this point, however, I think we would probably pick a Tiffin. Not because of the difference in bill quality, but they offer Liquid Spring as a option. Right. And, right. and we're not just saying that because we love, you know, because we no. sponsor, but, but we actually love the we've, product. We've so, talked about it in yeah. other videos. Once you get it, it's hard it to go hard back. It is hard to go back. If, yeah. that, if that is out of the question, if it doesn't, doesn't matter to you, they're pretty close. You yeah. know, they're both, they're I, I personally think, and the gassers, the, the Numar is a better build. 
But they're both excellent coaches. You really won't go wrong with either one. Mm -hmm. And the next question comes from Whale Song 81 it says, how do your dogs travel in the RV? Are they crated or seat belted or sleeping on the couch? None of the above. Mm -hmm. We take them in our car because our one dog, Sierra, who's a doll, but she's older now and things never used to bother her. But as she's aged, she does not like riding in the RV. She can be in the RV, we take them camping, but she does not like riding in it. Again, you know, they're they're like little senior citizens when they get older and, and we just wanna make it easier for her. So yeah, we just take them in the car and we follow. They don't come on all the trips if we're going on longer trips or uh, trips that we're gonna be out of the RV for much longer periods of time. Izzy's sister watches the dogs. But. Yeah, for us that works because we're not full timers. So in addition to that, it's actually safer for them to be in the vehicle. Right. They can be strapped down. Yeah. It's a, it's a safer construction. If you don't have that option, like if you're full timing, then we will recommend like setting up a crate and securing that somehow. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be kind of out floating around. Yeah. Next one comes from Jesus Saves. How long have you been married and how did you meet? So we've been married. We just celebrated our 10 year anniversary this year. If you didn't see how we celebrated our 10 year anniversary, we're actually, we'll link that video up above. It was pretty awesome. And we met online on okcupid.com and the rest is history. Next one, number nine is from Steve Wall. Will you go diesel on your next coach? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> basically because we'll be traveling a lot more. Uh, there's more carrying capacity. There's more towing capacity. So as we're gonna be on the road for an extended period of time for months at a time, we would actually use those components, that, like those assets, reasons to get a diesel. Yeah. Next one comes from Rick Harrison, and he says, what do you consider the best motorhome manufacturer? Preferably Class A gas, but also just overall for Class A. So regarding the gas, we just talked about that a couple of questions prior, so mm -hmm. that, that answered that. Now, if you're talking about manufacturers, I mean, it's really depending on what you want to pay, yeah. right? I mean, the, pay millions. And yeah, the custom manufacturers usually going to put out a better product, right? Like they're coming on a commercial chassis or they're making their full chassis walls and everything. So, so Newell is one of our favorites. Class A's, right? Newell for travel. Uh, the older like um, country coaches, mm -hmm. they're made really good. Code. The older Monaco's pre-rev group, all those are production. Yeah, any of the Prevo's, For travel uh, makes yeah. a really good. Liberty, Millennium. Yeah, those are yeah. all the Prevo ones, yeah, of course. Yeah, all uh, the conversions, yes. Yeah, so, so any of those, but you know, they're big money. So <laughs> <laughs> questions are kind of general, yeah, but we're just giving you, our, yeah, we're giving you our opinion on that one. Next one is from Mike Monkey. I think that's how Mike you say monkey? it. Mike, not Mike Monkey. Uh, monkey. Mike Monkey. Sorry, gotcha. Mike, I'm butchering your name. How do you balance your time with family, work, exercise, RV trips, maintenance, video filming, editing, work around the house? Do you ever get a chance to sit down? I don't know how you have time for everything. Now, we actually did a video on this, which we'll link above. Mm -hmm because we get this question all the time. We so we made a video Here it is again. <laughs> yeah, to just explain all of that. But in a nutshell, we don't have a ton of downtime. We really don't stop much. If we have downtime, we usually find something to put there to accomplish something. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, everybody has 24 hours in a day. We said this in the other video. We just have to manage that those 24 hours differently than some others, right? So like we don't watch a lot of TV. There, that's stuff that we don't do. Family time is important to us. Mm -hmm. We do spend that. Uh, you know, obviously work is important because we have to make money right. and uh, and YouTube's important, right? There's no way around that. Like if you want to be successful on YouTube, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So you have to give up things somewhere else. Right. All right. Here's question number one. Now, this is your turn to answer. Put it in the comments below. Question is, what do you like most about our channel? Can be anything. Put it in the comments below and then you can comment again at the end when we ask you a really tough question. All right, next question comes from Phil. Now, Phil comments a lot. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Stefan, Stefan Newick. Ah, sorry, Phil. It says, where in the world is the bypass for the hot water heater in the 3626 Bay Star? Your help is always appreciated. That's a real specific question. Yeah, so I'll, wanted to I'll quickly address that. It's, if you open up the bay forward of the hot water heater, I'm pretty sure it's the same. I don't think they've changed the design. You're gonna see on the right side, there's a panel. Right behind that, there's a bunch of uh, valves. One of them going, it's the lower one going to the back of that hot water heater is the, the bypass valve. We're actually gonna do a winterizing video mm -hmm. probably before this video comes out. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll <laughs> actually like get the camera in there and show yeah. you exactly how to do it. Next one is from Tom Helfrick Stone. And he says, I live in SoCal and it's pretty easy to find BLM land for free boondocking in the Southwest US or really inexpensive national forests. I hear that the Northeast US may not have these opportunities. I would like to travel to the Northeast, Chicago to Syracuse to New York City next spring. And I'm wondering 
wondering about places to stay. Do I need to start booking now? Uh, yes. Yeah, so you're correct on both fronts. Number one, there is not, this is a heavy yeah, populated area. Yeah, we say that all the time. Secondly, yeah, you should start booking. There is, there's more room in New York State, like that Syracuse mm -hmm. area. It definitely opens up. New York City, you can't camp in New York no. City. No. You, you're going to be camping in Jersey City in a parking lot if you want anything close. Right, that's the closest one to New York City. And it's really expensive, and it is a, a gravel parking lot that you can see the New York City skyline, which is the draw, I guess. But uh, Yeah, so we would advise absolutely start if you're looking to go into 23 i would start booking now we yeah. have to do that we live up there so yeah, we kind yeah, of book out book. usually by january everything's booked yeah, already at least in the northeast part yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. next one comes from one of our erv insiders cindy may Furtado silva when izzy retires and you move south will you close your dog training company in new jersey and start it up wherever you move to or retire along with izzy well we're gonna we're retiring but we're never really retiring i can take my business wherever because i do have some trainers that work so i can actually run the business from the south or wherever we are and still be able to keep the business so at, at this point that's our plan i you know we'll be busy doing a lot of different things so we'll never be fully retired next comes from don haller he says, how long do you leave the dogs unattended in the coach while doing non-dog things? Mm -hmm. Non-dog. I see, I didn't say dog. So the most really four or five hours. Yep. At home, we can leave them longer, but I don't like in a smaller environment. I mean, they're fine. They sleep the whole time, but... We watch them. We, well, yeah, we have the cameras, so I'm a little psycho with that, but... Yeah, we always make sure they're doing okay. But when we're camping, most of the time, we're not going out for long periods mm -hmm. of time. And if we are, like, again, if we're at an RV show where we're going to be gone all, the whole day, we don't bring we them We don't with take us. them, yeah, yeah. We leave them with a sitter at home. Yeah, it's the reality. If there's, if we know we're going to be out, like MJ said, right. we just don't bring them. Yeah. Next one, Eileen Murphy, who we met at Hershey. Will you sell the house in New Jersey and travel full-time for a year or two before you look for a house in the South, or will you immediately look for another home? So, all right, two-part question. Yes, we will be selling the house in New Jersey, not because we don't love where we live. We love our home. Well, we, we actually, love our street. We, we actually think Jersey, we could <laughs> take that and like put it somewhere in the south. It would be great. That's what we'll be looking for. But yeah, we're going to be selling for many reasons, taxes being a huge reason, especially income tax, right. you know, which is kind of crazy in New Jersey. But anyway, uh, will we be full timing? We don't think so. We, we think we're going to be most timers. We, we're probably going to have a home base somewhere, mm -hmm. whether that's going to be our full time like that's where we're gonna, you know, settle our roots there or not. We don't know yet, but uh, we were more than likely, we don't like that idea of having nowhere to go back to. Right, next question is from another ERV insider. Gene Hall says, any thoughts on the next Endless RVing meetup locations? So this past summer in August, we had a phenomenal meetup. We had about 40 something people mm -hmm. come. It was so much fun. A and, very cool weekend. Oh, it was great. And we really look forward to the next one. At this point, we, we aren't planning one, at least not for next summer. We may be thinking about the summer of 23. In terms of locations, we don't have any ideas yet. So you gotta hang tight, but we definitely will be doing again and probably at a much bigger level. All right, a couple more to go. Next one. Love this guy. He's always commenting too. Camping Allen. He says, when do you forecast for work retirement? I get that. guess that means specifically Izzy and beginning to do longer trips. And when that happens, would MJ continue to run her company remotely? Somebody else had asked me that, but so beginning to do longer trips. Yeah. So we have about, I have about four and a half years unless something comes up and they offer us medical to get the old timers out, then it, it would be immediately really. Yeah. Four and a half years till I can, you know, get medical and, and retire. And then the second part of that, yeah, that's when we'll start doing longer trips. Absolutely. The reason yeah. why we can't do longer trips now is, well, it's a couple of reasons. Jason's still in school. We obviously can't go for months at a time. And Jason has perfect attendance so far now from freshman year and this part of sophomore year and wants to keep it. So he can't, he doesn't want to miss school to go anywhere. Yeah. And then the second reason is I don't, I can't take six months off at a time. Right. That's just not feasible. Yeah. And then, yeah, MJ will, will probably yeah. more than likely run her company remotely, which is mm -hmm. always a nice thing. All right. The next one comes, there's no name, but it's from ranger 87370 hello izzy and mj i'm a newbie of sorts and my question is do you use the black tank flush on the campsite or do you flush it at a dump station my camper i used to have was an older one with no black tank flush yeah we dump it well if assuming you have full hookups right. and you're not dumping it on the side of the road uh yeah if you have this sewage there yeah you use the black tank yeah. flush the only thing the black tank flush is doing is just kind of spraying the inside of the black Cleaning tank it out. Yeah. so it's not like you're letting anything more out you just right. 
you're going to dump, you're going to dump there. Right. You can do it at a dump station, whatever you, yeah. you want to do. Well, you prefer. Do. I think you're just saying curious is the proper etiquette. But there really isn't, you know, it's yeah, what you choose. Dump it in the appropriate yeah. place. Next question. This is from Joe Don Baker. Of all the states you visited, which one would you pick to move to? New Jersey, 100%. <laughs> so, yeah, we've been to, you know, kind of down the whole east coast mm -hmm. a little bit midwest west, like yeah. indiana has been the furthest west we've been which we actually really like the people in indiana yeah. some of the nicest yeah. people out there so that's kind of hard to say a lot you know south carolina we really liked uh, north carolina we've been to several times we really liked georgia georgia it, but it's hard to say because until you're in it for a little right. bit you don't really know like we would love to say, yeah, we want to move here, but we can't really say that till we're there. For example, we're down in Naples now. We really liked, you know, by the beach and large the properties. And, and then two days into it down here, we're like, Naples is not for, it's us. Not for us. Not because yeah. of the beautiful landscape and the weather. We just didn't, we didn't feel like the welcoming, like we're in other places. the vibe, like, yeah, like the other southern states. It just seems different in this area. So, yeah, like, so that, yeah. to answer that question is very difficult. I'm sure once we're retired and we're able to spend more time in certain areas, then we'll, we'll, you'll kind of have that call and you have that feeling, right, that's right. what we think. All right, two questions left and then it's the hard one for you. <laughs> so next one comes from Dawn Hoff. Hello, I hope you're all doing amazing and the trolls are staying under their bridges. <laughs> My question is, how did you decide on a motorhome instead of luxury fifth wheel? Was it the ability for your fur babies to travel more comfortably? Do you think it's an easier adjustment for pets to travel in a motorhome than in a truck snuggled up to their hairless servants, owners, and family? So us selecting our RV had nothing to do with the dogs. No. It really... Yeah. For us, it's like what works best for us, mm -hmm. but that's that's different for everyone, of for course. Them. What was the big factors? What were some of the big factors while we decided well, to get a motorhome? Well, I was going to drive it. I didn't feel comfortable towing I, something. I just didn't feel comfortable in that truck with God knows how many feet behind me. Motorhome, I had no problem with, so I probably would do a fifth wheel now. But that was a big part because we wanted to be able to take long trips and do a lot in it one day. And look, one person, you're kind of limited to how much you can travel. Mm -hmm. So now this way we bounce back and forth yeah so for me it was uh it's easier to set up a motorhome mm -hmm. and the second thing was storing at our home that was huge right so when we had our trailer we couldn't store at home we had to store it at a storage facility so no so two things number one you're paying for a storage facility mm -hmm. number two it's much more inconvenient having to bring every load and unload it's it's just a real pain right where we live is very tight corners and we wouldn't be able to get a fifth wheel up or down so. yeah so those are two big factors, but if, if you have storage, you know, the setup and breakdown time is significantly different between right. a towable and a motorized. So for us, we, we're probably going to continue keeping a motorized. Well, also, we didn't want to get a new truck, too. That was another, that was another big factor. You know, yeah, Because our truck wasn't really going to be able to pull much of it. Yeah, that was another factor. <laughs> we would have had to get another truck yeah. in. Then it becomes that trucks are going to fit in the garage. It, right, it becomes right. like a, a more thing. So the motorized, we, yeah. we really, we kind of like the motorized. And here's the last question and get ready because your question is next. Kevin Zoll said, I bought the Tire Miner TPMS system based off your review. I love it. Although I have a question I can't find, maybe it's simple preference. When traveling down the road, do you leave the screen on the temperature setting or the pressure setting? I go with temperature thinking if I see an abnormal temperature, it would signal a problem. Then I think I should watch the pressure instead to see if I start seeing a drop in pressure. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really preference. We prefer to do, I like to see the PSI. Now, just keep in mind, the tire miner is monitoring both at all times. So if you have the PSI up, it's still monitoring the temperature on the back end. So if there's a temperature problem, it'll alert you. Vice versa, if you have the temperature up and you start losing pressure, it's still gonna alert you. So really, either way, it doesn't matter. We just keep it on PSI. Well, thank you for being here. Now, we have a tough question for you, and we want you to be honest. And if you're honest and nasty, you may make it in our next Basement Dwellers <laughs> video. Seriously, in all honesty. Put in the comments below, before you put what you like about our channel, we'd love you to put what you don't like. Something that you think, oh, I'd love to see this different, or mm. I'd like to do more of this, or do less of that, or, you know, your hair is stupid, or whatever. Don't say that. Something that you would like to see differently. Yeah, also in the know. comments, put some other questions you may have, right? Yeah. So we'll, if, if this gets a lot of feedback, we'll, we'll do more videos yeah, like this. Yeah, we do these every once in a while. They're fun. Yeah, so put them in the comments below. And for myself and MJ, we thank you guys for watching, and we'll see, see you, you on, on the road. road.